afternoon, good evening, good night. This is He Speaks with Kareem Rocker. We are back, y'all. This is day 12. I'm looking rough. I was supposed to, you know, this is, I do them a day before, so I just, I, I was doing some painting, so I really ain't even knocked all the paint off me. I'm looking rough, but if I didn't get it in right now, y'all, I probably wouldn't get it in today. And I got to get it in. I'm just not going to. Once I put my mind to do something, I'm not going to not do it. You know what I'm saying? I say I'm going to fast for 30 days. I'm fasting for 30 days. I say I'm going to preach for 30 days straight. I'm going to preach for 30 days straight. So I refuse to miss it, even though I'm dead tired. I'm dead tired. Uh, that sun is getting a little hot out there. I was painting today. Did a finish yesterday. And uh, But, man, I'm still on it. I refuse to, to miss this goal. Amen? Because uh, when you hit them goals with God, man, hey, just imagine he getting you to yours. Amen? Come on, y'all. Hey, so uh, today, what we talking about, y'all? Woo, I need this one here. Oh, man, we preaching to myself. You know what we talking about today, y'all? We talking about be strong. Be strong, y'all. Woo. Man, when the door gets tough, oh, man, woo. I got stuff all over my face. I'm going to paint and uh, dust and stuff all over my face. I probably need to do something, but... Uh, I ain't even knocked the dust off me yet. But be strong. I got to be strong, even though the dust on me. I got to be strong, even though it's getting hot. Be strong, uh, even though, you know, uh, uh, work get hard and uh, uh, you may be moving a step slower than you was last year. You got to get back in the, in, the, in the shape and the swing of things. And uh, uh, and you're getting older. You, you're older, man. We're getting to that age where every year it's stacked a little more, little more, uh, a little extra weight on now for most people. I ain't stacking the weight. Actually, probably is. I'm probably at the heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm a solid 220 right now. Uh, that's that's a solid. But I ain't I ain't fat in the middle. Uh, my core is tight. Ain't nothing jiggling and shaking. I can move. I can jump. I can run. I can do a lot of stuff uh, that uh, over 46 can't do. Still going up and down these ladders. Still getting it, man. Uh, but uh, we're talking about being strong, and I'm staying strong. But let's let's not listen to what I got to say. Let's listen to what the words say before we do that. Come on, y'all. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Ooh. Get warm out there. Thank you. You kept me protected. My work was hard. It was a little extra. I thank you that you gave me the strength to pull through and get it done. I was sore from yesterday. I thank you that you gave me able body to get up and do it again today. I thank you, Lord. May everybody out there be blessed. May they body be able. Bless those out there dealing with some physical ailments, y'all. Bless those who have lost loved ones, you Lord. Thank you for being you, Lord. Thank you for just being you. Me, it be more of you, less of me. May you flow freely. May they receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's pray. Uh, let's pray, Lord. Let's let's leave. let's eat. Uh, y'all know I'm tired. I'm tired. That's why I had to get to it, boy. I am seriously on like running on, and then I'm still. I got two hours to eat. It's just like, woo. It rough. It rough, y'all. Uh, all right. So we're going with uh. We're going to Joshua. Let's hit Joshua today, y'all. We're going to kick it in Joshua hard today. Uh, Joshua's, man, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, descending, uh, you know, uh, 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 Israelite, descending down through Moses, Aaron, uh, after Aaron is Joshua, correct? Yeah, I'm a little tired. Uh, but yes, after Aaron is Joshua. Uh, and so, uh, Joshua, one, and we're going to eight and nine, eight through nine. Joshua one, eight through nine. Church women, I say, man, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on the day, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be you will be prosperous and successful. <laughs> Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you whenever, wherever you go. Hey, y'all. There's some good bars right there. Come on, let's take it to the top, y'all. Hey, he said, keep this book of laws always on your lips. So you should be always, you should be, even if you're, you're misquoting, you should be able to paraphrase these Bible verses. You should be able to explain it. You should be able to uh, 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 talk to an unbeliever about it. Uh, even bring them to Jesus if they wanted to. 
Every Christian should be able to do that. Amen. Come on. Uh, we said meditate on this this day and night. Day and night, man. Sometimes I'm praying at day. Sometimes I'm praying at night. But even when I'm not praying, I gotta prepare these sermons. I don't just like pull this out of out of the head. I gotta prepare these sermons and make sure that it makes sense and try to make a lesson out of it so it makes sense to y'all. So y'all can follow along with me. So I ain't just up here from the bum the bum the boom boom and all that whoop the boom. But uh, so you got to meditate in the day and night so that we may be careful to do everything written in it. And when you say written in it, following the laws, following the commandments. Uh, yeah, we're not under that law, but it does not mean that we should not be following those commandments. Man, hey, you following those commandments. Woo! That's that's the uh, you realize lying and stealing and, and, and murder. And when they say murder, they talk about murder with your mouth. It's a very hard thing to follow. It's not as easy as people think. It says, but then... Um, uh, then you will be prosperous and successful if you meditate in this word day and night get this word in your mind he said seek ye first the kingdom these things will be adding unto you and he says right here again he says then you will be made prosperous and successful if you learn this book first no matter whatever degree you get I'm not saying don't get educated on anything else I'm not saying get uh, time and uh, experience at anything else please do please provide please find a way to grind please find you a hustle but while you're doing that, get this word, and then you will be prosperous and successful. He said, have, have I not commanded you? Did he not command us to be strong and courageous? It's too many places in the Bible where he says be strong, be courageous. Uh, all through Proverbs, he said, do not be afraid. Don't you be scared. Don't be scared. Uh, do not be discouraged. And for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. You need to be strong because God is with you. You need to know God is with you, and sometimes we forget. Sometimes we get in situations, and we think it's the end. Oh, we lost this boyfriend. We lost this girlfriend. We think, oh, Lord, in the end, the whole world about to die. God is with you. Even if that person ain't with you, yeah, your spouse cheated on you. Uh, yeah, your boyfriend cheated on you. Yeah, your girlfriend cheated on you. Yeah, she was out in them streets. It don't matter. God is with you. You need to be strong. Come on. Come on. Joshua, give me the next one. Joshua 310. I'm just boy. <laughs> Joshua 3, verse 10. I'm I'm very tired, y'all. <laughs> that's why I just had I, I look, this Sunday, I supposed to have my shirt and tie. No, I couldn't even I'm doing them the day before now, remember. And it, I'm just getting off, so I didn't just wake up with paint all on me. <laughs> I woke up like this. No, it <laughs> Joshua 3. <laughs> and we're gonna go 10 through 17. Joshua 3, 10 through 17. Church with me. Yeah, we're going to read a little bit. Church with me now. Say amen. He said, this is how you will know that the living God is among you, and he will certainly drive out before the Canaanites, the Havites, the Havites, the Periites, the Gashanites, the Amorites, the Jesusites. Uh, see, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one for each tribe. As soon as the priests who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all our earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off. Stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp and crossed the Jordan, the priests carrying the ark of the covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan as a flood is at flood stage, all doing harvest. Yet, as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water's edge. The water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap of good distance away at a town called Adam in vicinity of Zerithian. Um, Zerithian. Uh, while the water flowing down to the Red Sea of Araba, this is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all of Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing of the dry ground. Hey, y'all, them is bars. Y'all need to be hiding this one in your heart. Come on, let's go back to the top because a lot went on and you probably, it might have just went by you. All you heard was some water and stuff. But look what happened here. He said, first of all, God is instructing you. When God tells you to do something, you have to do it in faith 
and it's going to take some strong. It ain't going to be easy to do what you're doing. He's not going to ask you to go to the store. He might tell you to do, it's going to be, it's going to seem impossible. It's going to seem impossible, but you got to have the faith that God is with you and be strong. Come on. He said, tell the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant. When they reached the edge of the Jordan River and go stand in the river, and he calls all these people, this is, you know, George, he, he said, you know, uh, uh, this, the God is, is, is among you and will certainly drive out all these other people, all these other inhabitants that are on their land. God's going to drive out them because they're the, they're the promise, uh, the, the people, this is the promise of God. Uh, coming fruition all the way back from, from Abraham uh, uh, and, 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 and from all the way back there. He came all the way back from Abraham and this is that thing happening right now. And and that should let you know when God has something for you, it's, it, it, he had it in play when you were born and ain't nobody finna stop it right now today. Amen? Come on. Because when God has something for you, it is for you and can't nobody stop it. He will see. He will do some things. He will part of see, but we're not even. Let's get to the part. He says, "See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan River ahead of you." Now, when the twelve men of the twelve tribes of Israel, one of each tribe, as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord and the Lord of the earth and set foot in the Jordan, the waters flowing downstream to be cut off and stand up in the heat. Say now, the water is flowing downstream. This is a not a sea. It's a river. It flows. It does not sit still. It flows. Think about this, people. It flows. This is not still water, a pond. This is water that's flowing this way. All of a sudden, the water is backed up, and it says stood in a heap. So now the water is just piling up. Now, I've seen a, uh, 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 a documentary on how this can actually happen. They, they show physically how it can happen. They found a higher spot in the Jordan River that goes parallel right across where Jericho would be even though the Jordan River is deep this way, that one little narrow thing right there, and they showed how the wind could have blew, and if the wind blew, it could have they could have walked across. The one thing they couldn't explain though is this part here. It says, so when the people broke camp across to the Jordan, the priest carrying the ark and the covering went ahead of them. Now the Jordan River was at flood stage, all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests carried across the Ark of the Jordan, their feet touched the water, the edge of the stream stopped flowing. And it piled up in the heat in a great distance at a town called Adam in the uh, vicinity of Zerinthi. And then where the water flowed down to the Sea of Arabath, that is the Dead Sea, and was completely cut off. So the people crossed opposite of Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark and the Lord stood in the middle in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while Israel passed until the whole nation had completely crossed on dry ground. That's the part you can't explain. Therein lies the Jesus, the God, the miracle in this thing. This, walk, this, this land has been underwater. You cannot have land underwater and it come out perfectly dry. They walked by on dry ground. Dry ground, people. It was not wet. It was not mud. They didn't say it was getting stuck in the mud. You heard me about my Sebago story when it's getting the shoe stuck in the mud. Man, if you got to walk through some mud, you is not, it's going to be a rough walk. But see, when God tells you to do something, he didn't tell you to walk in the mud. He telling you to walk and be strong. He telling you to step. See, they had to trust God. They had to listen to God's word. Verbatim, not take none from it, not add none to it. And then they had to do it. They had to step into action. He said, step your feet at the edge of the water. Now, you're going to be a little muddy right now. But as soon as you step at the edge, what if they, they didn't step at the edge? What if they said, let's talk about it? Well, let's see. Let's send somebody else to see if they go step into the edge. No, he said it had to be one from each tribe. You pick them 12 people in the ark, carrying the ark, and the, and the priest. And y'all go, and then when they went, it pushed all the water back. Now the whole nation of Israel will get to come. What if they sent the wrong person? Uh, uh, some, man, I went out there. What if they sent Jerome? Jerome went out there, and he stepped in the water. Man, I got waist hot in the water. Ain't moved. Fish was biting all on me. And it's muddy. Look at my feet. That's what it would happen. 
you can't phone your, your thing that God got for you in. See, God told that priest to do it and, and pick the tribe, the 12 people from the tribe. If they take anything from it or add anything to it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's why Moses didn't get to go in the promised land. Add it up to it. God told him to hit it once, he hit it twice. It's simple as that. When you do get a word from God, when you do get that rhema, don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing from it. Exactly. And pay attention. Be in your spirit. Really examine what he said. And then walk on. Walk on faith. And then you get something like this. What does this let you know right here? You should be strong. You know why? This is the second time he has done it for the people of Israel. We're talking about uh, Red Sea with Moses. Now we're over here in uh, the Jordan with Joshua. You got to know that he will do it time and time again. We got sin in our house. God got us. We always make it because he always got us. So whatever it is, we always make it. God got us. I know it sounds real easy to say, but you need to know in any situation, God's got you. You always make it. And that's called being strong. That's how you be strong in a situation. When everybody else is losing it, you got to be strong. Stand on his word. Come on, y'all. Joshua 4. Give me a, a, go to Joshua 4, y'all. And give me 23 through 24. Uh, 4, 23 to 24. Joshua 4, we went for y'all. We're working Joshua today. 23 to 24. Church with me now. Say amen. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan River what he had done to the Red Sea. When he dried it up before us until we had crossed over, he did this so that all the people on earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. And so that you might always fear the Lord of your God. Amen. That is ours. Come in, y'all. Come on. Come on. He said, for the Lord your God dried up. See, he didn't just part the water. That's the part that everybody misses. He didn't just part the water. He dried the mud up. He said, dried the Jordan up before you. Just so y'all can cross. He dried it up. That was the miracle right there. God, the Lord, he, he, look. He did it to the Jordan and the Red Sea. So if he did it once, he'll do it again. Come on, y'all. And when he dried it up before, y'all crossed over. And it was dried until all y'all got over. Not one person got caught. You didn't see it. Not one time they say it was one old lady and she just wasn't moving fast enough. And she was on an old, uh, uh, look like a walker, but it was just a bent over tree limb. You know, no, it didn't happen. They didn't say, you know, there was a certain guy, he didn't have no arms and legs. And he had to roll all the way through. And it was nice and dry, but he was a little too late. And, water, you know, he caught him face down. No, it didn't happen. It, it, everybody made it. He said and he did this so that the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. So you might always fear the Lord your God, knowing he is powerful and he is with you. So be strong. Come on. Let's go to Joshua 5. Let's finish this meal, y'all. I'm a little tired. But I need y'all to be strong. Just because you're tired don't mean you can't be strong. Come on. Joshua 5, 13 through 14. The fall of Jericho. Church with me now. Say amen. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him. With a drawn sword in his hand, Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as the commander of the, of, of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message do you have from the Lord have for your servant? I keep hitting this one because I need y'all to hit this one with me. Look, the walls of Jericho are 50 feet, uh, it's a 50 foot uh, uh, thing in the middle that like a, a, a tech tower. And they got 13 foot walls all the way around and built of stone. And God instructed Jer uh, uh, Joshua to walk around, what was it, six days, seven days, I'm a little tired. Uh, and, 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 and sing and do these, you know, beat the drum. They had certain things. They had to play certain songs, play horns, hit certain, and, and, and for a certain amount of days and walk and do this and do that. 
and then just told them and then holler and the walls going to fall. I need y'all to understand again, they had to listen verbatim. He was very specific. God is a specific God. He is not vague. You get this old vague thing in your head. I'm like, oh, I don't really know. I think God want me to do it. If it is vague, it's probably not God. He is God is very exact. He was exact with Noah and he was exact with you. He was exact with Joshua. All they got to do is not, like I say, do one thing and it, it don't work. So he telling them to walk around, blow the horn, you know, and do it six times, do it on the seventh day, do this, do that. You got to listen to God's word. Listen when you get that rain. If you get in the spot where he's trying to use you, where he wants to use you, listen, people, listen. Take nothing from it, add nothing to it. But back to it. He asked the, the angel, are you for us? Or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have come. I have now come. Then Joshua fell down in reverence and asked him, what message does the Lord have? For his servants. Not only do you need to be strong knowing that you, if you get to this spot where he wants to use you, you're in the presence of him, but you need to be reverently in fear. <laughs> I mean, think about it. If somebody, I know somebody, if God has instructed you to do something and it's a miracle type of thing, this thing is going to look scary to other people. It's going to be miracle like. But you being in the midst of it, you can't be scared. You got to be strong. See, all it takes is one person in the middle of this miracle, and this thing ain't working no more. And I'm telling you right now, some of y'all are in the midst of a miracle, and you're not being strong. The miracle may be an end of something. Relationship, the end of a job, the end of a chapter, the end of a season, the end of a, uh, uh, living in this house, living on this side of town, the end of, 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 of this job, this career. But whatever God has ever sent them out of it always was rough in the wilderness till they got the land of Lincoln honey it was slaves in Egypt oh they was memorizing that out in the, in the woods for 40 some years but they got to the land of milk and honey see you want to get to the land of milk and honey and you don't need to be murmuring you need to be strong you got to be listening to God's word and, we're, and willing to follow and have the wherewithal to know that he is powerful Almighty one true God. Amen. Y'all, come on. I need you to be strong. I need you not to be sissified and weak in this thing. I need some powerful gangster faith. Everybody won't be gangster and savage these days, but they want to be savage with clapbacks and stuff that ain't even doing that. Won't you be savage with these demons coming at you? Won't you be clap back at some of these demons that's coming after you? In your life, through relationships, through God, I, I'm a clap all up. You know, I'm I, I just don't like uh, uh, the softness. I'm not a soft person, so uh, if if you don't come at me with the softness, I'm gonna give you what you're looking for. I'm gonna give you what you're looking for uh, <laughs> because uh, I'm just not a soft person. Now I, I I pray and I ask God about situations, but you can catch a reflex. But what I'm telling you is not about the reflex. It's about being strong. Don't reflexively, you know, you know, let somebody catch you. And it's hard to stop a reflex. It happens. But you can be strong in any situation and show strength. Sometimes it's whooping somebody's butt and sometimes it's not. Sometimes the strong thing is to not whoop people's butt and to walk away. I, it, 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 it wasn't strong for Will Smith to slap Chris Rock, but it was strong for Chris Rock not to kick him in his back and break all his spine loose not to just grab a microphone stand and ah, just close line and take out wrap it around and knit see this is the thoughts that came in my head that would have happened probably would have been all reflex but he was strong he was strong that would nobody say he we yeah he was strong the man stood down and he was professional and strong See, sometimes again, whooping somebody tail is a strong thing, but in this case, the slap wasn't the strong part. The strong part was when Chris Rock still down took it. 
that was strong, man. And he showed all of us how strong his little funny self could be. Well, we probably ain't even know Chris Rock had that in him. You know, some people say he he was being a little B.I. Maybe he, you know, did want to fight somebody twice his size. Nothing wrong with that. Especially when you can probably lose money and the fight. Why lose the fight and lose money? I'm just saying. At least win one of those. But he found a way to be strong. You got to find a way to be strong in whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going through ain't going to last. I promise you, most of the stuff you're going through right now, you will not remember it a year from now. I need you to understand that. Most of the stuff, you, you, your world coming to an end, you can't do without. You won't even remember it a year from now. If you do, it won't even, it won't even make you bad an eye with feeling. Because now always feels so finite. But now is not finite. Tomorrow is coming. This shall too pass. And when it does, you need to know if I'm strong in this thing, I can see the miracle. Because just like when they was walking out of Egypt, they was being strong, but they, they had to be strong in the middle of that thing to see the miracle. See, if you're not strong in this thing, when God calls upon you, if you're not strong in this thing, when God, when you need God, so you can't call upon God and then be weak. Then you ask, God, give me away. You know, they had to be tripping. Like, God, we can't walk across the Jordan. It's deep. Boats flow through there, God. God tell you to do something, huh? How many of y'all been told something by God? Huh? Sometimes God uses your parents. Sometimes they use your friends. Sometimes they use situations. Sometimes they just use your prayers to come and sin. All you got to do is pay attention. God's trying to tell you something. God's trying to tell you something and show you something, and you keep denying it because you are practicing idolatry. Because whatever this situation, this job, this person, whatever this thing is, you think you can't do without it. It ain't number one thing you can't do without it, and that's God. So I need y'all to be strong out there. Hey, y'all, this me. He Speaks of Korean Rocker. Man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I am tired. I, I came to up, so... Y'all be talking about me. Put in the comments. Look, Minister Rock, look, toe up. Minister Rock look like he been on the block. <laughs> Whatever. I ain't mad. I can laugh at myself. So put it in the comments. Talk all you want. Hey, y'all. It's been He Speaks with Kareem Walker. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening.